Looking to the future of the football program on the playing field, four LSU in a class have made their decision known last week about whether they will make the jump to the NFL. The only junior who has decided to make the jump is junior defensive tackle Ricky Jean-Francois. Francois is projected to be a second-day draft pick. Recor returning to Tiger Town is the offensive trio of running back Charles Scott, offensive tackle Saron Black, and wide receiver Brandon LaFell. I'm now joined by Sports Showtime reporters Frank Barnett and Carter Bryan to talk these players returning and a couple of other hot topics. How y'all doing today, fellas? I'm oh, doing Pretty great, good, man. man. All right. Pretty good about you. I'm good. I'm good. It's talking about this whole football thing. All right, Carter, first question is for you. What do you think is the major reason Brandon LaFell decided to take his name out of the draft pool and return to LSU next year? Brian, no doubt Brandon LaFell didn't make his decision based on getting his draft stock higher. Many scouts have already labeled him as an NFL-ready receiver right now, especially after being an all-SEC performer with abysmal quarterback play. So I honestly believe that he is just coming back because he enjoys playing college football and living the college life. In turn, though, I really believe the Tigers will be better off without him next season. But that's a different story for a different day. I really like Terrence Tolliver, Brian, for real. All right, Carter. Well, we'll have to get you back on the show whenever you have all the information for that different story. All right, Frank, next question's for you. What do you think this trio coming back, Saron Black, Brandon LaFell, Charles Scott, what do you think they're going to do for young quarterback Jordan Jefferson next season? Uh, Brian, the return of these three guys will wreak success for young Jordan Jefferson. This is possibly the best thing that could have happened to him. If Jefferson wants to be the leader of this Tiger football team, there's no better way of doing it than taking the reins from these three guys who will hand them over, all the while guiding, mentoring, and showing young Jefferson the ropes of college football, which he has a slight grasp of already but will hone by season's end. Moving to the defensive side of the ball, Les Miles has found himself three new coaches for next season. The first big, big grab for Miles is defensive coordinator John Chavis. Chavis coached the last 16 seasons at Tennessee under Phil Fulmer. Joining Chavis' defensive staff at LSU is defensive line coach Brick Haley, who coached the defensive line for the Chicago Bears in 2008. Taking the reins in the secondary for the Tigers will be Ron Cooper, who held one of the best defensive backfields in the nation last year in the Steve Spurrier, South Carolina. All right, Frank, do you think the hiring of this new trio of coaches is going to get our Tiger defense back to the level they were under Coach Bo Pelini and get us back to the national title? Uh, well, Coach John Chavis for LSU will be the difference maker for the Tigers. Chavis is known for maxing out players' capabilities on the defensive side of the ball. Also, I just love his blitz schemes as well. This is important because for some reason last year we simply forgot that Chad Jones can get to the quarterback. Expect Jones and fellow secondary members such as Peterson making plays in the backfield next year for the Tigers in the back seven. Frank, Coach Chavis is no doubt a huge hire and will definitely be a huge asset to the defense this year. But I really like the hire of Ron Cooper to the secondary and Brick Ailey to the defensive line. LSU secondary was filled, and I mean filled with talent last season, but they were often confused on getting the signal and making the calls in the back area. Cooper will more than likely settle down this fiasco in the backfield. Brick Haley will also bring a faster pace to the D-line, which at times really looks stale. Just look at the pro bowlers Haley made at Chicago with Alex Brown and Tommy Harris. Also look for more sacks next year from the men up front for the Tigers. Drake Nevis, seven sacks. Look for it. All right, you guys both make really, really good points. Let's switch things up and go to the pro game a little bit. Super All Bowl right. 43 is set. The Cardinals versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Cardinals, their first Super Bowl appearance in franchise history, while the Steelers, a little different, looking for their sixth title. Carter, what do you think is the most intriguing thing about this matchup? Man, Brian, I'm looking forward to yet another black coach in the Super Bowl in the form of Mike Tomlin. I know the defense for the Steelers has been simply impeccable with Harrison and Palomalu, but they haven't seen players like Kurt Warner and Larry Fitzgerald. I'm also anxious to see how he will plan to stop these players away from Heinz Field. If Mike Tomlin sticks to business, I see Big Ben hoisting the Lombardi Trophy for the second time in his young career, Frank. No doubt, Steelers, I predicted them before the season. I, yeah, I don't know about did. you. I don't know about you, man. Well, I'm not going to lie, Carter. Uh, Super Bowl 43 is probably not going to be the most exciting Super Bowl that we've seen to date. True. So besides the much-anticipated million-a-dollar-a-minute commercials, which are going to be aired, I'd have to say that I'm most looking forward to how Kurt Warner will perform. You know, and we have to remember that this is a guy who's already been to the Super Bowl and won. And this is a guy who as well has won a Super Bowl MVP award and did it with a Jekyll and Hyde Rams team whom the year before were a laughing stock, much like the Cardinals of now. So look for Warner to cap another Super Bowl win and possible Super Bowl MVP if he comes out and performs the same way he has been this postseason, which has just been Carter. 
sheer perfect. Come on, perfection. now Troy Polamalu is just too much. I don't think that they can the Cardinals' team. offense. Steelers, they Brian, can. don't listen to him. All right, things Cardinals been a bandwagon. little hostile on the Sports Showtime set today. Thanks a lot, guys, for coming in. We look forward to having y'all over the course of the season. Coming up, we'll have your athletes of the break. Stay tuned. This is Sports Showtime on Tiger TV. Welcome back to Sports Showtime. Though students may get to take it easy over the holidays, the athletes and season at LSU are always competing. So here at Sports Showtime, we can't let their hard work go unnoticed. We nominated two athletes who went above and beyond for our athletes of the break. Our first is senior gymnast Ashley Claire Kearney. ACK captured the all-around title at the Cancun Classic for the second straight year, leading the team to a victory over top 25 ranked opponents Michigan and Boise State. Claire Kearney now owns 17 all-around titles and has two perfect scores to her name. Our second athlete of the break should come with no surprise. LSU quarterback Jordan Jefferson made just his second start of the year and led the Tigers to a 38-3 victory over the 14th ranked Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. The freshman was named offensive MVP of the Chick-fil-A Bowl and most importantly to Tiger fans, was responsible for no turnovers. And finally, the old Alec Box had a visit from a few of the Houston Astros. Pitchers Jeff Geary and Brandon Backey, as well as former Astros great Craig Reynolds, all made their way to Baton Rouge. Their visit was part of a three-week community outreach the team does each January. Other stops in Baton Rouge included a children's hospital and academy sports and outdoors. Although pitcher, pitcher Brandon Backey didn't play college ball for the Tigers, he still appreciates the tradition here at LSU. Got some kind of, I've got a little bit of love for LSU, and, and uh, I like their program. I've seen what they can do. I've heard about what, what they have uh, here, the new facility that they're about to play in this year. Uh, it's a good program, so uh, it's pretty easy to jump on the bandwagon. All right, while we have time, we just want to say congratulations to President Barack Obama who had his inauguration today. That's right, Brian. It was a big day today. Yeah, I know. I actually missed class to watch it, so hopefully my teachers won't mind and won't give me any bad grades hopefully in the quiz not. today. Maybe they'll cut you some slack. All right, well, that's going to do it for us here today at Sports Showtime. You can catch the rebroadcast of this show on Tiger TV tonight at 6.30 and 10.30. Or if you're off campus, you can catch the rebroadcast on Cox Channel 4 at 11.30 and WBTR Channel 19 at midnight. From all of us here at Sports Showtime, have a great day. Have a great day, LSU, and go Tigers. Shoot sports, show time in the towns. Get the scoop on the ball and sneak peek on the track. Key in on the field when them tigers attack. In fact, you get it back a few times a week. But it starts on Tuesday, third day of the week. They're beast when they broadcast. Increase like a fall class. Critique when I speak by my squad in the quad, man. Yeah, they the stars on the quad, man. That's the TBC, Tiger TV people. Every game, every start, every player, every situation.